Good afternoon. Oh, hang on one sec. I don't have my earbud in. There we go. Okay, there we go. I feel like you can probably hear me better when I have my earbud in. So, happy Wednesday. Um, say hi if you jump on. Today we are, we have our words of wisdom um, Wednesday. That's, um, I'm super excited to, to actually be doing this. This is something I feel like God has kind of asked me to do and I just haven't done it yet. So, um, I put some pressure on myself to get this stuff going and, and share with you, you all, some of these things that he's been teaching me and just encouraging me in and then to share that with you. So if you're watching live, say hi. Um, we're going to continue on today talking about um, how to get healthier spirit, soul, and body. And last week we talked a little bit about how to do that in the spirit. Um, I kind of touched on that and I wanted to kind of expand on that today a little bit more because as I was thinking about it, um, again, I want to just mention really quick that like um, my focus here for these words of wisdom is um, obviously to help encourage everyone, but um, my hope and my passion is to help moms um, who are followers of Christ to help us learn how to get healthier God's way. So, hey Mags, thanks for waving. Um, so that's what I'm really trying to, who I'm trying to talk to. Again, I mean, if you're listening and you're a guy, I'm sure this will be useful for you. But really, as moms, uh, we need some TLC sometimes. And so I really think that learning how to get healthier um, from a biblical perspective, if that's you, um, this should hopefully be really helpful. And if it's not you, if you, um, don't really have a relationship with God or that's not something that is really in your realm, um, I definitely believe that there is power in having a relationship with God and knowing your purpose in life. And so I'd love to chat with you about that if that's you. Um, but if you are a, a follower of Christ and you're a mom that I am talking to you today, so, um, just to kind of recap, last week we talked about how do we get healthier, and the first step is getting healthier on the inside. And so, from a believer's perspective, that is our spirit. When we first um, decide, I'm going to follow Christ, um, He's going to be Lord of my life, we receive a new spirit. We receive something inside that's not necessarily tangible, but it's something that we are given um, at birth, but it is got a defect and so it has to be changed so once we decide that we are going to follow Christ we are going to make him Lord of our lives he sends the Holy Spirit and that is what lives inside of us and it begins this metamorphosis process of change in our life um, that is really what makes us become like um, like Christ obviously we're not God but we get to be like him in that we get to have this power of understanding how life can really be purposeful. It can be driven. Um, we can be a part of God's plan and he has a plan for us. I think that's pretty awesome. So um, I wanted to read a verse because just to reiterate um, the spirit, soul, and body, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, again reiterating, once you have the spirit, you have a new person. It says that this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And so... For a believer, we have the Holy Spirit, and that Spirit is what changes us. And, you know, um, I wanted to reference, if you've never studied um, Andrew Womack's Spirit, Soul, and Body, I highly recommend this study. We did it with our church as a small group uh, a couple years back, and it changed the way that I thought about life, um, thought about how I have control over certain things in my life. 
if I have these steps figured out, spirit, soul, and body. And so really, my thought process in this has stemmed from this study and from really studying this and asking the Lord, what does this look like for us? Because the, the body can't change sometimes without the spirit being changed because God puts things in order, right? He, he's designed us a certain way to live a certain way, to thrive a certain way, and it starts with the spirit. And so I would definitely recommend uh, this study if you haven't done it. Um, one thing I thought that was interesting I wanted to share with you from this study, just as a reference, um, I really like this diagram. Let's see if I can show it to you in that, let's see if we can say, I know it's backwards, but it says body, soul, and spirit. So the spirit is the innermost person or the innermost part of us that's not tangible. And then there's the soul. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today in that, um, again, the, the order of things has to be divine first. Um, in order for things to change, the spirit has to be different in order for the soul to change. And I'll get into that here really quick. Um, I wanted to read, um, just reiterating again from last week, that our spirit has to be first, the insight has to change first. And the verse in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. Again, we decided we're going to have a relationship with him. Um, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So Christ calls us to himself. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. That's what we receive when we become a believer. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Again, that's 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. So in order to attain those promises, in order to attain that divine nature, we first have to be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, and then that process starts to change. But then we have to do something. And part of that is making him Lord of our lives and, and being in the Word in order to allow the Spirit to feed our spirit because the word is the only way that it can feed our spirit. It can make those changes. And the spirit is what affects our mind. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I put in the description above something, really quick story. I had I was doing a workout yesterday. And it's a, kind of an intense workout. It's called body combat. And it's um, martial arts, mixed martial arts. But it's really intense. But I really love it because... It just helps me get endorphins out. And so one of the coaches um, in the class I was doing yesterday said something, and I was like, this is perfect. Um, but we were like almost done with the workout, which is always that way. You know, you're getting to the point where you're like exhausted, and you're like, I don't think I can do it anymore. Um, and he says, um, he's like, okay, so they're in a break. We're taking a little breath. And he's like, take some time to acknowledge how we feel, how you feel. How do you feel right now? So. I think it's important for us in life to, especially as women, I know emotions are like rampant probably like right now with life, um, but just in general, like take notice, how are you feeling? Think about it. Like, I think that's half the problem sometimes is we don't even like stop to realize where we are. Like, it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to feel a certain way. Um, it's just not okay to stay there is the problem. And I struggle with this as well. So he's like, okay, take some time to acknowledge how we feel. Okay, you might be feeling tired and exhausted. You know, you've got this workout going and we're almost done and it's hard. And, you know, what he says is, okay, now we've acknowledged how we feel. And I love what he said. He said, but we don't have to accept it. We don't have to fall into this trap of like, I'm just tired. I'm just exhausted. I'm just going to give up. Like, he's like, no. He's like, don't take a step back now that you realize where you are. He's like, we have to step it up and we have to push harder. And so that's really hard to do sometimes when mentally you're struggling. And so that's why I wanted to talk about the soul because what is the soul? And from Andrew Womack's study, um, you know, and kind of what I've seen and what I've wrapped my head around, uh, please share, you know, if you 
think of anything else or if this is uh, if you have anything that you've learned from what the soul is but the soul is basically your mind will emotions and your conscience um is what andrew womack says so basically it's your personality it's who you are and unfortunately we come into this life with a um what's the word deformed or you know we're we're born with sin we're born with the nature to not be in connection with god and so that is what has to change and it's not something that instantly changes our spirit gets changed instantly but our soul doesn't um, our soul is ever on this journey of living and learning about life and following god and so this is actually um, I think I'm going to talk a little bit more about the soul next week also because sometimes digging into this can be hard and I think um, it's something that needs to be talked about. Um, but again, the soul is in connection with the spirit. Um, I don't know if you remember in that, the little circles that I just showed you, but the, the spirit and the body never actually touch. Um, and so the work has to be done through the soul in order for our bodies, physically, our bodies to get healthier, um, to make changes. It, it all has to go through the mind. It all has to go through the soul. It all has to go through our emotions and our will and our conscience. And so it's very important that we understand this process of how we can get healthier um, in our body. A lot of the times it starts with our soul. It starts with having the correct spirit or the right spirit. And so, again, the spirit is what changes our mind, will, emotions, conscience. And the only way that we can start that process is, as a believer, um, is through the word. The word is what feeds the spirit. The spirit is what feeds the soul. And the soul is where the change starts to happen. So, again, this is kind of part one of talking about the soul and how we can get healthier in the soul. But it's really important, I think, talking about these things because um, when it comes to, you know, struggling with, you know, weight, struggling with uh, weight as far as like either physically or, you know, anxiety, depression, um, physical things that our body suffers from, there's a deeper underlying reason. And so one of the ways that you know, we can change these things, especially as a believer is, and what I want to reiterate is like, we have, we have the power to control these things. Um, maybe control is not the right word, but we have the capability. The capability is there. It's not from our own strength. It's from the spirit. The spirit teaches us how to do this, but it's so we can change our mindsets in life. And so we can live our God given purpose in life. And I think this is especially so important for moms to understand because I think we beat ourselves up so much about, you know, how much we haven't done, um, how much we need to do. And a lot of it has to come back to our mindset and how we, how we see life. And we need to see life the way that God sees life. And so that's why I am super passionate about teaching women, especially moms, um, how we can have more control, how we can have more power over these things in our life. And we can really get a handle on our emotions, on our will. Uh, it's not something I have mastered. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, it's a journey, right, as, as life is. Um, but it takes time, it takes practice, and it takes accountability. Um, and accountability is key. So I think when we get these things lined up in a row the way that they're supposed to be, um, when you put God first in your life um, as a you know, as a woman, as a believer of Christ, um, these things will happen and it, it can be a much more enjoyable process. So, um, and with that, thus, um, the reason for my new Facebook group, which is up and running today, I just got it, um, going. And so, um, I'm going to be sending out some invites, but if you are a mom, um, and you are a believer in Christ and you are looking for a way to get healthier and you want to do it in more of a um, biblical environment or a spiritual environment, um, then this group will be for you. Um, you can check out the group. Um, I'm gonna put a link up at the top of my Facebook page as well, so you can just click on it. It's a private group, 
It is for women only. Um, so, dudes, sorry about you. <laughs> um, but if you are married, you might have some advantages there to any of these women who are going to be in this group. But I really want this group to be focused um, specifically on moms um, and teaching you guys how to get healthier God's way and just, you know, teaching each other. You know, I, I only have so much information and, and, you know, there are probably other people who could teach me a lot more. But just to be on this journey together, to be an encouragement to each other, um, and just for me to be able to share some, some things that I have learned um, to make life easier, to make life simpler, and to actually make improvements in our health. Um, in spirit, soul, and body. Um, you know, a lot of times I think we focus on body so much that we forget that there's a certain step and there's certain steps to doing this. So um, I'm rambling now. So anyways, I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. I will see you guys soon.